Cerebral aneurysm. So you were just going about your day minding your own business when suddenly your brain decides to throw the party of the century and you're not invited. Basically your brain's blood vessels are like a complex network of water balloons. Now what happens in a cerebral aneurysm is that one of those balloons starts developing a weak spot and begins to bulge out like it had one too many protein shakes. It's like your blood vessel decided to go rogue and start its own expansion project without consulting the brain's building committee. A lot of different factors like high blood pressure, smoking, and genetics can cause this condition. Sometimes trauma from constantly getting hit on the head can also cause this because, honestly, your brain really doesn't appreciate being treated like a pinball. Now, in most cases, cerebral aneurysms would just quietly be there, minding their own business, not causing any trouble until something ruptures it. It's like the pipe finally giving out, spraying water everywhere, except in this case it's blood and it's in your brain. Now this is where the real drama starts. You'd first experience something called thunderclap headaches. Just imagine if Thor decided to use your head as an anvil. This would also be followed by nausea, vomiting, severe seizures, stiff neck, and a sensitivity to light that's bound to make any vampire proud. There are different ways to treat cerebral aneurysms, like surgical clipping, where a tiny clip is placed on the neck of the aneurysm to stop blood flow. It's like pinching off a water balloon before it bursts. But once again, prevention is always better than cure, so always keep your blood pressure in check, avoid smoking, and try your best to manage stress. Agnosia. So, picture this, you're having a meeting this morning with some big shots in the business world and you're running 10 minutes late. Worse still, you have to take the stairs to the venue of the meeting, which is on the fifth floor because the maintenance crew are fixing the elevator. Unfortunately, while sprinting through the stairs, you slipped, hit your head on the concrete, and went out cold like you took a punch from Muhammad Ali in his prime. You wake up three hours later and the doctor says you suffered a concussion from when you hit your head earlier and you'd be discharged the next day. However, a few days after the incident, you wake up one morning and pick up your phone, but for the life of you, you can't figure out what this rectangular thing does, and your trusty alarm clock suddenly looks like an alien artifact. You most likely have agnosia, a disorder that makes you unable to recognize and identify objects, people, or sounds using one or more of your senses. But the tricky part is that you can still see, hear, or touch objects. All of your senses are still intact, but your brain is unable to process the information. It's like your brain decided to play a massive practical joke on you. This disorder is caused when you take damage to the part of your brain that is responsible for processing or understanding information coming in from your senses. The damage could occur as a result of a concussion, brain tumors, carbon monoxide poisoning, or sleep sleep apnea, Alzheimer's disease. So it's another Monday morning and you wake up to prepare for work. You bathe, brush your teeth, and get dressed, but as you're about to leave the house, you can't remember where you left your keys. You try and try, but it's as if someone went into your brain and deleted that memory. You don't overthink it and just catch the bus instead, but as you get to work, you realize that you're constantly forgetting tiny details, like where you kept the file for the meeting and how to control the coffee machine. The thing is, you have a brain condition known as Alzheimer's disease, which basically basically causes you to lose your memories like water in a sieve. You see, Alzheimer's is like a mischievous imp that sneaks into your brain and starts unplugging random neural connections. It's as if your memories are playing an endless game of hide and seek, but they've forgotten they're supposed to be found. This condition can be triggered by a lot of things like old age and genetics, but the most common cause of Alzheimer's disease is an abnormal buildup of sticky clumps of proteins called amyloid plaques and tau tangles in between the brain's neurons. Imagine someone spreading glue all over your brain neurons and turning your brain nerves into spaghetti. This disease progresses slower than a snail on vacation, but eventually your memory and life story will be filled with more holes than Swiss cheese in a shooting gallery. Bell's Palsy. Imagine you wake up one morning looking in the mirror and bam, half your face looks like it's auditioning for a role in a wax museum. The other half, business as usual. It's like your face is trying to pull off the ultimate before and after photo all by itself. This condition causes one side of your face to drop permanently. Suddenly, expressions like smiling, frowning, or even raising an eyebrow can turn into one-sided performances and become very tricky. Bell's palsy occurs when the seventh cranial nerve in your brain decides to take a siesta. This nerve is responsible for controlling your facial muscles, and when it checks out, 
it's like the puppeteer of your face dropped all of the strings on one side. Sometimes Bell's palsy can be caused by viral infections like herpes simplex virus, influenza, or Lyme disease. However, it could also be caused by too much stress or your body's immune system going into overdrive. The good news is that this condition is only temporary and lasts for weeks or maybe a few months. However, treatment like steroids to convince your facial nerves to return from vacation early and antiviral medications in case a sneaky virus is behind your facial mutiny can help you recover faster. Brain Tumors so, we've already established that the brain is the body's ultimate CEO who ensures that all the activities and functions are running smoothly. Now, each part of the brain has its role, from making important decisions to keeping things organized, but then here comes the villain who starts to damage and infect all the brain cells with a virus. Basically, a brain tumor is an abnormal growth of cells in the brain. These cells decide to start their own club right in the middle of your brain's perfectly balanced office. The tumor would take up space where it shouldn't, squeezing the poor neurons and making it hard for them to do their jobs, pretty much acting like a high school bully. Now, there are two types of brain tumor, which are the primary or benign tumors and secondary tumors. The primary tumors are the home bodies that start primarily in the brain and would not migrate or move to anywhere else. They're like that friend who crashes on your couch and never leaves. They're not great, but at the same time, they won't cause too much trouble. Then, the secondary or malignant tumors are like the traveling salesmen of tumors, starting elsewhere and deciding your brain looks like a nice vacation spot. They would grow, occupy, and trash the whole place. You'd have trouble remembering things and would also develop a really bad vision, and if it doesn't already sound bad enough, on top of everything, you'd experience mind-splitting intense headaches and seizures. There would also be subtle personality changes and constant mood swings. One minute your SpongeBob SquarePants happy and fun, and the next, you're literally Squidward, angry, sad, and depressed all the time. Epilepsy and Seizures Epilepsy is a condition where the brain gets a bit too excited and starts sending out electric signals like they're at a ray. This results in seizures, nature's way of reminding you that you're not always in control of your body. Normally, there are generalized seizures where the whole body is affected by the electrical storm. It's like the power goes out all over town. It is the classic seizure you see in movies when they want drama. Your body goes stiffer than a board, then starts shaking like it's auditioning for a paint mixer commercial. There's also one called the absence seizures, which is like the ninja seizures of the epilepsy world. One second you're there, the next you're still there, but your mind took a quick vacation without telling you. Then there are the focal seizures, which only affect one part of your body. So instead of your whole body seizing and shaking uncontrollably, it would just be your left hand or leg. You would also experience temporary numbness in the limb or face. It's like when just one neighborhood is experiencing a total blackout while the rest of the city is functioning just fine. Amyotrophic Lateral Sclerosis (ALS). So, your neurons have been hard-working delivery drivers, zipping messages from your brain to your muscles with lightning speed and spot-on accuracy. However, one day, a sudden disease known as ALS enters your body and starts to cause so much havoc that your neuron's jaw becomes tougher than trying to eat soup with a fork. So basically, ALS attacks your motor neurons, so when it strikes, it's like someone's gone around just snipping random wires. The first symptoms would manifest as severe muscle weakness, suddenly opening a jar becomes harder than solving a Rubik's Cube underwater. You'd also experience random, uncontrollable muscle twitches and cramping. As the condition progresses, you'll start to sound like you've had one too many at the pub, even when you're stone cold sober. You won't be able to swallow food anymore, and even breathing would practically become a demanding challenge. Sadly, as time goes on, more and more neurons will progressively get damaged, and your body, which was once bustling with activities, will become quieter than a library full of mimes. Your muscles start shrinking, and simple movements like walking become as challenging as teaching a sloth to sprint. Currently, treating ALS is like trying to plug a leaky dam with bubble gum, but there are a few options like medications that can slow down ALS's progression. Ataxia this condition practically makes walking a straight line feel like you're trying to cross a tightrope after spinning around endlessly. Let's imagine your body is a graceful ballet performance. Normally, your brain, nerves, and muscles work together to keep you moving smoothly across the stage. But when ataxia comes into play, it's like someone swapped out the ballet shoes for roller skates. Now, the condition affects coordination, balance, and speech. 
It's like your brain's GPS system has gone haywire, making it hard to move around smoothly. The word ataxia comes from Greek meaning without order, which is precisely how your movements would feel, disordered and uncoordinated. Your arms and legs are like over-enthusiastic puppies, full of energy but with absolutely no idea where they're going. Ataxia doesn't just stop at making you look like you're attempting to river dance on a moving sidewalk, it also decides to spice things up by messing with your speech, too. Suddenly you're talking like you've suddenly developed a bizarre accent that's a mix of drunk pirate and overexcited auctioneer. Acute Spinal Cord Injury First things first, acute spinal cord injury isn't technically a brain disorder, it's more like the brain's distant cousin who got into a fender bender. The thing is, your spinal cord is like the interstate where all your brainy messages travel to tell your body parts what to do. Now you might be wondering, what's the brain got to do with it? Well, the brain is basically like the CEO of Bodily Functions Incorporated, and the spinal cord is its most trusted messenger. When the spinal cord gets injured, it's like the CEO's smartphone suddenly losing signal. No more tweets, emails, or messages. It's as if someone dropped a giant boulder on this information superhighway causing a severe traffic jam. This communication breakdown can lead to all sorts of wacky situations. Suddenly, when your brain instructs your legs to go for a walk, the message gets lost in translation and your legs would just lie like two couch potatoes binge-watching Netflix. Being the drama queen, the brain doesn't take this sudden ghosting lightly so it starts to freak out and sends mixed signals. It's like your internal group chat just exploded with a million unread messages. This can lead to issues like muscle spasms and changes in reflexes. Sometimes the brain might even start to rewire itself, trying to find new ways to communicate with the body. It's like when your favorite app crashes and you desperately start clicking on random icons hoping something will work. So while acute spinal cord injury might not be a brain disorder in the strictest sense, it still causes severe problems to the brain. However, getting better at ASCI is like trying to teach an old dog new tricks, so you'll have to learn how to walk, stand, and move all over again. It's a slow process, but with physical therapy, your brain and spine can be reunited again. Meningitis. So it's your final semester in law school and you've been burning the midnight candle for the last two weeks non-stop. However, you wake up one morning feeling like you fell from the top of the Burj Khalifa and landed on a 10-inch mattress. At first, you think it's just a nasty flu due to the symptoms, headache, fever, and exhaustion. But when you try to get out of bed, something's different. Your neck is so stiff that you can't even look down at your phone without wincing in pain, and the sunlight streaming through your window feels like a hot iron is poking your eyes. These symptoms indicate that you have have meningitis, an inflammation of the protective membranes covering your brain and spinal cord. It's like your brain decided to try the hottest hot sauce and instantly regretted it. Now, what causes this spicy brain situation are tiny troublemakers like bacteria, viruses, or even fungi. They could sneak into your brain by eating food contaminated with something infectious or inhaling harmful fungi from the environment. However, in some cases it could be as a result of a head injury or a side effect of a medication or as one of the complications of cancer. The good news is meningitis can be treated with antibiotics, antiviral, or antifungal medications depending on how you got it, while the non-infectious cases are treated by addressing the underlying illnesses or injury. Hydrocephalus Hydrocephalus literally translates to water in the brain, but the water is actually cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, which is a clear, colorless fluid surrounding your brain and spinal cord. You see, this fluid is supposed to protect your brain and spinal cord from injuries and also remove waste, after which the fluid is then reabsorbed into your bloodstream. But with hydrocephalus, the normal flow and absorption of CSF is blocked, kind of like when your bathroom drainage gets clogged. Nothing gets in or out. This results in a buildup of CSF, which causes the cavities within your brain to enlarge. As they enlarge, pressure increases inside your head, causing brain malfunction. This would cause you to feel a headache so bad you'll swear tiny construction workers are jackhammering inside your skull, accompanied by an intense dizziness that feels like you've been on a merry-go-round for hours. In babies, it can cause their heads to swell up like balloons, giving new meaning to the term big-headed. The cause of hydrocephalus is a combination of genetics and environmental factors during fetal development. That is, most people are born with it. Others may acquire it after suffering from a stroke, head trauma, or brain tumor. For the scariest part, there is no cure for hydrocephalus, but it can be treated with having your brain operated on, which would mean occasional visits to the doctor to keep things in check. 
Diffuse axonal injury. Diffuse axonal injury is what happens when your brain gets so shaken up it makes a martini look stable. It's the neurological equivalent of taking your brain, putting it in a snow globe, and then shaking it like you're trying to win a contest. Let's say your brain is a city with billions of tiny roads which we'll call axons, connecting different neighborhoods and neurons. DAI is like an earthquake hitting the city, causing widespread damage to these roads. It's as if someone took a wrecking ball to your brain's highway system, leaving the GPS utterly confused and sending signals to all the wrong directions. Well, this is definitely not caused by thinking too hard. DAI typically occurs in severe cases of traumatic brain injury. We're talking car accidents, extreme sports gone wrong, or attempting to headbutt a rhinoceros. Anyways, if you were unfortunately a victim of one of these incidents, the first symptom would be a complete loss of consciousness for an extended period of time. When you're up from your days of unconsciousness, you'll experience confusion, memory loss, and motor function issues. Your body starts moving like a drunk puppeteer is controlling it, and sometimes you won't even be able to do simple tasks like talking or even feeding yourself. It's like your brain decided to hit the control Z button completely. Unfortunately, treatment for DAI is not as simple as putting your brain in rice overnight. It often involves a lot of supportive care, rehabilitation, and therapy. You'll need to learn everything you once knew all over again, like walking, buttoning up your shirt, and even solving simple math problems. And this is where our sponsor for today, Brilliant, can become the superhero to save the day, because if you're looking for somewhere to learn new things, there's nowhere better. The thing is, Brilliant is a learning platform designed to be uniquely effective, as their first principle approach is to help you build knowledge and understanding from the ground up. You're also equipped with hands-on problem-solving lessons that let you explore and play with different concepts until you find the best for you. The best part is that an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from different high-end tech companies craft every single piece of content on Brilliant. Brilliant also builds your critical thinking through problem solving and not memorizing. So while you're building actual knowledge on specific topics, you'll also become a better thinker. Brilliant also has a program called How LLMS Works, which is an immersive AI workshop that gives you real hands-on language models as you explore, experience, and harness all the mechanics of today's most advanced tools. This is practically an all-in-one package of goods. Goodies. To be a part of this and try everything Brilliant has to offer, all you need to do is visit brilliant.org slash the evaluator, or you can also find the link in our description. You'll also get 20% off your annual premium and subscription, and everything is free for a full 30 days. 